In the Gun, episode 149, and it's time for an instant reaction edition here of ITG once again, as Neil Brown has signed a contract extension announced by our guy, Ren Baker, earlier this afternoon. What's going on, everybody? You are in the gun. I'm Wesley Euler. Somewhere on the side of the road in the mountain state is the signal caller, Jed Drenning. I mean, Jed, this is this is how people know it's the authentic instant reaction here because, I mean, where if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see Jed is clearly in his vehicle. So where are you at? Where have you pulled over here for 20 minutes for us to have this conversation? I'm in beautiful Upshur County, West Virginia. Uh, going on weak Wi-Fi, uh, I pulled off along the road, and I think back west to that line from the Phantom Menace. A communication disruption can mean only one thing: invasion. <laughs> well, it can also mean a coaching extension, right? <laughs> so here we are. Something that is uh, that is timely in this regard, certainly, and that is a extension for Neil Brown, fresh off of that nine-win season last year. His contract has been extended one additional year for uh for neil brown in the old gold and blue that would take him through the 2027 season now jed sources have told metro news that the contract renewal will actually decrease neil brown's annual salary over each of the next three years from 4.1 to 4 million in 2024 um and kind of similar 4.2 to 4 million 2025 4.4 to 4.3 million in 2026 and that Neil Brown is foregoing $400,000, nearly half a million dollars, and in increases to his salary over the next three seasons to invest more into the program, including his coaching staff's salaries, sources say. So before I turn this over to you to tell us what this all means, a thank you to our friends at Bet Online for being a presenting sponsor of this episode of ITG, where the game starts at betonline.us. So, Jed, I think... Originally, when this came out, when people just see the headline Neil Brown extension, they think, now, wait a second. We just had a season of getting this thing back in the right direction. Is this really the time to be giving your head coach an extension? Shouldn't you want him to go earn it? Like there was some of that initial like, wait a second, what reaction? But I think when you look into some of the numbers, just a one year extension, some of these um, X's or I should say maybe semantics from a, a salary standpoint, from a buyout standpoint as well, too. I think this makes a lot of sense for Neil. I think this makes a lot of sense for Ren in the athletic department. So let's parse through this. What's kind of the the most important thing for people to know here? The four hundred grand is uh, th that's something that's a collective total, as you talked about over the course of three years. The the contract initially was supposed to go through twenty six. Now it will go through twenty seven, but it frees up by Neil's choice four hundred thousand dollars to reinvest in other things toward the program, like coaching salaries with it almost west has a feel here's here's the vibe i got from it <clears throat> i know that neil first of all values his staff values <clears throat> his assistants values his crew and he's always trying to clamor for new ways to generate more money for those things that he values and those people that he values this almost had a vibe when i first started to read through it and understand when a quarterback in the NFL renegotiates the contract for cap <laughs> purposes to make the team more competitive, right? It kind of had that vibe to it, right? Uh, you're betting on yourself. You're willing to give up a little money because you think in the long haul, you're going to have more success and that will be more money for everybody at the end of the day. But just a couple of weeks ago on this podcast, we talked about the new deal for Lance Leipold at Kansas. Lance Leipold's own salary uh, went from almost six million to over seven million, catapulting him up to number two in the Big 12 behind only Mike Gundy. Well, one of the first questions I had was, what does this mean for his assistant salary pool? Because we've already seen him lose Andy Kotelnicki, his longtime and highly valued offensive coordinator, was with him all the way back to his D3 days. Well, now Andy Kotelnicki took a new job at Penn State. Now, bear in mind, Wes, Andy Kotelnicki was making over a million dollars a year as the yeah. OC at camp. So, <clears throat> yes, it matters what a coach makes. Of course it does. That's the market. But what also matters are what do those around him that – can pitch in and help you do the job that needs to be done, what are they making? And Neil Brown does, in fact, see the big picture. He values his people. He wants his people taken care of. And this is quite literally putting your money where your mouth is. I mean, I've yep. heard people through the years a number of times half-jokingly out of the side of their mouth suggest 
or maybe the coach should make a little less and put it back into the program if right. he wants this done or he wants right. that done. Right. This is the first time that I can remember it actually happening. The coach actually stepping up and saying, all right, I will make less. I will take money out of my own pocket if, in fact, that's what it takes to get this program to where I believe it needs to be and where I think it can go. And so I, I think it's good news across the board. I think it, it, it lends to stability. It speaks in the confidence of what Neil sees is going on inside that building, the future that he feels West Virginia football can have, the future that Wren thinks West Virginia football can have. And when you're out making the pitch on the recruiting trail, even in this age of the portal, it, it still yep. matters, the message and the narrative, when you sit down in a high school gymnasium somewhere to talk to a player, that still matters what you're able to say. What you're able to say now is, hey, this place matters so much to me and what we got going on here. I took money out of my own pocket to stay here and keep this thing going, come be part of it. And oh, by the way, I'm not here through just 26, I guarantee it's now guaranteed through 27. So the other thing that was impacted, and here's the math that you and I were talking about, both his buyout has been impacted by this. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, what he would owe, uh, if what will be owed to him, I should say, if in fact he didn't make it through the life of the contract. Both of those numbers were reduced as well. But I think more so than anything, it speaks to the fact Coach Brown has confidence in where this is going. He wants to take care of those around him who make that ride all the all the easier. He he gets that part of it. It's a quality of life thing for a head coach. Sure. I mean, now more than ever, when you see this migration migration of college coaches who are throwing their hands in the air and saying, no, Moss, I'm going to the NFL because it's so much more low maintenance. I can just coach football and the GM takes care of everything else. Well, now you see a, a coach at the college level giving up money out of his own pocket because he sees value and wants to take care, not just those on the staff around him, but those on the support staff around him. So I, I think it's a great message. It's a great narrative. And I think it's something Mountaineer fans should be terribly excited about. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Again, this is one of those, I realize on the surface, across the ticker, you see Neil Brown extension, and it might it might blow you back for, for a second there. But you're right. When you get into a lot of this, it makes a lot of sense for a lot of different reasons. It makes sense from the university standpoint to get that buyout down by any means possible. Like, that's just smart business. We know particularly for a university like WVU that is doing with, dealing with some shortfall and some financial issues right now, you want to kind of insulate yourself for if there's a big unexpected drop this year, right? At the same time, too, though, going forward, it makes sense for Neil Brown because the salary that he's giving up, Jed, will help him keep that staff together, maintain that staff, build that staff in the way he wants. And then if he has success, you know, again here going forward – He's going to get that bigger time extension. It's going to pay him that money to get back to maybe where he should be. And of course, as you said too, like even though this is a new era of recruiting and transfer portal and NIL, it's still important for if, if, if you're meeting with the head coach and you look at that coach's contract and you're saying, I mean, coach, right now you're only you're only tied up with WVU or you're only tied up with this program through what would be my sophomore season. It's a lot easier to say, hey, my contract goes through 2027. You sign on this piece of paper to become a Mountaineer. I'm going to be here for your entire time that you're on campus. You know, um, that still means something to these high school kids. And that still means something in these meetings. Contract security. It's a lot easier to recruit and to pitch and to be honest about it. Mm -hmm. When you, when you have that time, you're not, you're not coaching on a one or two year deal. You're not saying, Hey, you know, I'm only tied up right now through your sophomore season. Neil Brown can honestly look at these kids and say, my contract is for four more years. That's as long as you're going to be here. Let's go build this thing together. And like I said, while this is a certainly, as you've said, maybe college football 2.0 or 3.0 or whatever era we're in now, there's, there's, still, there's still value in that. There's still meaning to that. Continuity is always going to matter. Right. <clears throat> Staff continuity and otherwise. It's, it's always going to matter. And, and to your point, Wes, what, what Virginia has suffered through Obviously, it's been well documented, the financial hardship in recent years, right? So part of this is, in fact, being smart enough to read the room. I'm sure that factors in as well. And Neil has to be looking at this like, look, I got a good job. Uh, I'm pretty well taken care of. I might be middle of the pack from a big, big 12 coaching salary standpoint, but it's a good living in the state of West Virginia. And 
if I have to give up a little bit to make more in the long term because of the success that I think we can reach, I'm yeah. willing to do that. I'm willing to do that for a school that has suffered financially in recent years. I'm willing to do my part to pitch in and make sure what needs done gets done. And I, I think that that's part of it with him as well. He, he sees a program and an opportunity from the very day that he stepped on campus, from the very day that he stepped up to that podium and was announced as West Virginia's head coach. He talked about the brand equity of West Virginia. He talked about the passion of the fan base. These are all things of value that Neil Brown recognizes even more now, five years into it than he sure. did when he was first hired coming out of Troy. So he thinks and recognizes and sees what can be done here. If you dot your I's and cross your T's now that we've calibrated and oriented ourselves to this new version of college football, we were all ambushed by this. <clears throat> this wasn't the job that Neil Brown was hired to do when he came from Troy in 2019. The game has fundamentally changed. Almost everybody in the game was ambushed to some extent, to some degree by it. And it took a couple of years to recalibrate, orient ourselves, put the trust together, create some stable footing. And that's where things are now from a scouting standpoint, from a recruiting standpoint. When you look across the building at all those departments, he's satisfied with what's going on on the offensive side of the football with the staff that he has. And you have names that he's very familiar with, with Matt Moore and Chad Scott that he goes way back with on the defensive side he knows Jordan Leslie very well he's become very comfortable with the staff populating that side so I don't blame him for looking around licking his finger and put it in the air and and reading things and saying hey I I see what we can do here we yeah. can really the, the passion of this fan base can translate into a lot of success and I think we can continue to, with the headwinds that we've had from a recruiting standpoint in the portal, I think we have some hidden gems in this portal class. The Mountaineer fans are going to come to know and love. And, and where we are from a building the roster standpoint, I, I just think that we have some momentum going on that he wants to continue to seize on and make the most of it. And if giving up $400,000 in the big picture is what it's going to take to get us where we want to be, I mean, he could stand back and easily say, hey, what's mine's mine. I don't want to hear about Davies' hardship. You owe sure. me this much money through sure. 2026. Sign a, con sign a contract, but right? Yeah, Absolutely. He didn't do that. He said, you know what? Let me work with you a little bit. I want to pay some of the assistance. I want to reinvest in the staff. I want to reinvest in the program. Plus, I like the idea of being committed here a little longer because I like what we got going on. So none of this had to happen. It was very much by choice, by Neil's choice, by Wren's choice. And how many times has Wren said since he arrived on campus from North Texas? He is omnipresent in the building. I, I mean, I see Ren Baker all the time when I'm around the team, whether it's at practice, whether it's on the road, whether it's yep. at a home game. I see Ren all the time. Ren's in the locker room. Ren studies, and, and not much is lost on Ren Baker. So he has evaluated every measure and every corner of this program, and that also has contributed to this end game to where we now have this extension. Ren Baker sees what's happening, even as we were struggling down the stretch or struggling in 2022 before we got some things going down the stretch. He saw what was happening in the building at large, and he liked the direction things were going. All it's going to take is a break or two our way, which we got last year, which is why five and seven turned into nine and four. And that's kind of what Ren Baker's involvement has meant. He's read the program. He's evaluated the job that Neil's done, and he saw enough value to offer this and put it on the table as well. And, and one more thing to piggyback on that as it relates to Ren Baker, after I thank Toothman Ford and our guy JR for also being a presenting sponsor of this breaking news, instant reaction edition of ITG. We all know cars cost less in Grafton. Make sure you're supporting those who support us and support our student athletes. Toothman Ford certainly at the top of that list. Ren Baker right now too, Jed, is in a knees deep, knee deep, balls deep, neck deep, however we want to describe it, coaching search and evaluation of the men's basketball program. He just yeah. finished one, right, with women's basketball and, and Dawn Pulitzer and that entire surprise of her leaving to Minnesota and having to make a hire there that he nailed, by the way. He's now trying to do the same thing with the men's team and everything going on there. This is something that, like, you also don't want too much to be on your athletic director's plate. You don't want him hiring a men's basketball coach and then having to hire a men's, like, these things take time. These things take a lot of dedicated effort and, and, his, and, and research and conversations and work. I mean, it's just, make no mistake about it, 
Ren is neck deep in work right now to hire our next men's basketball head coach and men's baseball head coach because, remember, Randy Mazie is retiring at the end of this season right. as well, too. <laughs> You really want him trying to hire three head coaches for three big programs at the same time. I think this makes sense, too, to give Ren another year to just kind of breathe and evaluate, give Neil another year to prove that he's growing this thing. And so for me, that kind of Ren-Baker angle makes a lot of sense, Jed. Like, while we have all loved what Ren has done so far, like, uh, an athletic director is also like a waiter. Right. And like he can only balance so many plates at the same time. You don't you don't want him holding on and trying to do too much at once. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's a great point on your part. It's, it's something that a lot of people won't be considering. And uh, yeah, the, the evaluation of the process and the legwork that goes in to hiring a coach in one of your major sports. Uh, it's insane. Absolutely. It, 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 I mean, you, you'll, there's only so many <clears throat> only so many hours in the day. And to, to stop and consider the shift in this narrative from, you know, a year ago, Neil Brown's on the hot seat. Uh, how many does it take for Neil Brown? To, first of all, I hate playing the numbers game. I well, know. How many does he have to win eight? Does, does he have to win play? nine? Does he have to? <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I hate playing the numbers game. <laughs> are you doing a quality job as the arrow pointing up? And are those in position of authority who make such decisions like Ren Baker convinced the arrow is moving up? Ren Baker obviously was and is. That's what matters to me. And when you think about the shift in narrative from where it was early last year, where it was when we were four and one, wait, where'd this come from? Wow, we're the we're the darlings of the Big 12 all of a sudden. To the way that we finished, now all of a sudden we're, we have a team that's nine and four with so many key parts coming back. There's a little bit of buzz surrounding it. We like the fact that we're still not getting much love from the Big 12 media outside of West Virginia. That's very appealing to us because you want to have that hard edge and that fuel. So to go from where we were early last year to talk of an extension today. And, yeah. and you know what? Not even a conventional extension. This is the exact type of, of conversation you want. It's one thing to have a conversation like you have taking place in Lawrence, Kansas, where you're saying, hey, we're going to pay our guy $7 million a year. He's the second highest paid guy in the league. We have $400 plus million plus in the athletic department. This is where we're going. And it's another thing to say, all right, yes, we're extending our coach. But we recognize the realities that currently exist within West Virginia. The university has had some financial strife. They've dealt with some hardship. He wants to retain the critical pieces around him, so much so that he is willing to put his own skin in the game, take money out of his pocket to retain those key pieces. This is a better story, if you ask me. We'll get back to the point where we're winning and generating money. That will happen again. But right now, that's just for a host of reasons. It's yeah. kind of a different animal than what it's been in the past. It's yeah. kind of a different animal than right now what it is at Kansas to some extent, but uh, from a financial standpoint. But but uh, I think it makes for a great story. It's a compelling narrative. Uh, it really says that your coach is all in on what he's doing and believes in the direction that things are heading. And it really says that your athletic director believes in the direction that things are heading and right now sitting here in the first week in march what more could you possibly ask for if Amen. you're a west virginia fan than a head coach and an ad who have more to lose than anybody around both have now proven that they truly believe in the direction this thing's going neil brown today put his money where his mouth is to show you that yes he's not just saying he believes it mm -hmm. this means he believes it 100%. And one more thing on that, after I thank Fortis and our friend Rick Lewis. Uh, listen, commercial roofing, they're the best in the business for roof performance and financial certainty guaranteed. Make sure you're visiting Fortis.us.com. One more thing with that too, Jed, in terms of putting your money where your mouth is, um, you know, for Neil Brown too, right? Uh, under under his previous contract, if he were to leave for another job, he would have to pay 25% of his remaining salary back to WVU. Now it's 10% under this new agreement. So that also means for Neil, let's go, let's go down the uh the dream season path here, right? WVU goes 11 and 1, 10 and 2, something like that, wins the Big 12 championship, goes to the college football playoff, makes a little bit of noise. And let's say who's a big time I'm trying. Someone like Florida, right? Seems like Billy Napier in Florida, that whole thing. There's some, there's some cantankerous. Why is this? Say it blows up a Billy Napier in Florida. Their schedule's insanely difficult, too, if you haven't seen it. 
Florida fires Billy Napier. WVU has this dream season, and f- and the Gators go to re- uh, to Neil Brown and make them an offer he can't refuse. I mean, they're going to pay him seven, eight million dollars or something to move his talents down to Gainesville. He all of a sudden gets to keep more of that money as well, too, as opposed to having to pay yeah. it back. So I think from everybody's standpoint, it is it's Jed. This is, I think, the final way to say it. Like it's the right risk reward balance at the right time, I think, for both Neil Brown and for Ren Baker. And that's a good place to be. It is a good place to be. Let's let's and, and let's close with this. Let's rehash what's played out with the buyout and if things go the other direction. And this is from the Metro News article uh, I'm reading directly. Brown previously worked under a buyout that would have required West Virginia percent of his remaining salary had he been fired on or before the last day of 2024 and 85% if he had been fired in 2025. Under the new deal, Brown has paid 75% of his remaining salary if he's fired at any point during the length of the contract. So take that in terms of, okay, let's ballpark it at $400,000, okay? He was... Well, let's skip ahead to the second part and then we'll have our conversation to make it easier for clarity's sake. If Brown leaves for another job at any point under the revamp contract, he's to pay 10% of his remaining total salary. Previously, as you talked about, that was higher. So let's say he gets fired, okay? Things go completely south. Things go off the rails. Yeah, you go four and, and eight fired. this year. Here's, yeah. how, here's how certain he is that's not going to happen, all right? Before he was owed 100% and then 85%. Now it's down to 75%. So in that, Wes, you're talking an additional 10% on a $40 million contract. It's a lot of money. I mean, that's adding up when it's outstanding money that he would otherwise be owed. He's well, I mean, he's sitting here saying that's not going to happen. I know that's not going to happen because of where things are heading. I'm on very yep. solid ground. The ground's only going to get better because we're going to win more and the arrow will continue to point up. I don't have to worry about that. Those are just numbers because it's not going to happen. I mean, that speaks to the confidence in this whole equation as well. I like both ends of that. You talked about it from the what if Florida comes after him, and I talked about it, what if it goes south? Well, Neil obviously doesn't see it going south. Right, right. And he's willing to bet on himself if the Florida scenario or whatever else does unfold. So, again, no matter how you look at this, it took supreme confidence for Neil Brown to step up to the plate and do this. But more so than anything – a, a big part of what influenced this, there's no doubt in my mind, is if you're around Neil at all, you understand and appreciate what those who matter to him mean to him. And staff members, that's his family. He wants taking care of good people who do good work for him. And this is his opportunity to do it in a way that uh, to some extent is unprecedented. I don't recall a coach doing this. I don't recall yeah. a coach doing this. Like, like I said, it has that vibe of NFL quarterbacks restructuring their deal to help free that's up good, cap space to be more competitive. Yeah. You know, that, that's, that's what it feels like. And when quarterbacks do that, they're only doing that because they're betting on themselves. So at least to some extent. And Jed, when you bet on yourself and it works out, quite often you make up that money on the back end anyway. So let's all hope, uh, let's all hope that's the case here, certainly. And uh, yeah, I tell you what, um, a a substantial like this isn't this isn't some seismic day for the program or anything but certainly a substantial uh decision by both parties and one that uh that you and i wanted to take some time here with you on the side of the road or in a parking lot safely in your car <laughs> and uh and you said upshur county correct is where you are right now yeah i'm in buckhand okay i sure ah. am ah. I'm in yeah. you might have some might have some family not too far from that area a uh final thank you to our friends at johnston equipment uh, hopping on board with us here for a couple months now. Make sure you're checking out their no, new location right off of Route 33 in Weston. Jed, great stuff, partner. Great breakdown as always. And, uh, and stay safe there today as you're rolling around. <laughs> Will do. Appreciate it. Oh, that'll do it for this edition of ITG. The one thing we ask of you is to be an ear and tell an ear about your new favorite WVU football podcast. For our producer, Skylar Callahan and the beer truck, Owen Schmidt. He's Jed Jennings, the signal caller. I'm Wesley Euler. Take care, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. You've been in the gun.